This will be a demonstration of using two radios and two computers uh, to talk to each other. Now, these are uh, CB radios I'm using. I eventually want to convert them to 10 meters, but they're on the 11 meter band now, which is where CB is. Let me show you the details. This will be the rig I'll be using for transmitting. I was just setting up my audio. You use the uh, native audio configuration tool in Windows. Uh, on ham radios, I would have mic gain and some other things. I don't have on these CB, so I just use the volume. By turning it up and down, I control the look on the waterfall. Let me show you closer, because you can't see it from there, uh, how this is hooked up. The laptop is an IBM ThinkPad T30. I'm running Windows XP. Uh, this software here is uh, commercial software, but you can get a trial for 30 days for free. It's called uh, Mix W. That's Mix W. And it's pretty good. It's a, it's a little dated, but it's fairly stable. And you can see this is called the waterfall. And let's see if you can see that. Okay, this is kind of falling down uh, like a waterfall. And this would be uh, up and down in frequency. And then the colors would show a signal. Let me see if I can't key here in AM mode and see if a signal pops up. Yeah, it's kind of a little dirty, but you can see right along there, that's, that's kind of a bunch of heterodynes on there. It's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be a sign one signal, but uh, it just shows you how it works on the, uh, on the waterfall. All right, you see it moves on down, and now there's no signal. There's no, uh, no lines on there. Actually, it should be one line coming down. Now, this is the side of the PC. This little circuit board here I bought as a kit on eBay. And I think it was $10, $8, $10 was shipping, and soldered it together. And then I had to solder these cables in. So these are the uh, mic cable and the speaker cable, which go into the little box. Then I have a, a plug-in in the back that takes the audio from the radio and pumps it into that board. And it goes through the transformer and everything and, and ends up going into the mic input of the computer. And then the speaker out from here where you'll transmit the, uh, the digital tones uh, comes out the input to the board and then gets sent to the mic input of the, the radio. You see that? Yeah, that's, that's my kludged microphone input right here. Now, if this rig was uh, equipped with uh, fully, I would use the serial port on the PC to switch between transmit and receive on the radio, but I can't do that, so I'm using a switch, an external switch. I demonstrated that in my last video, so that's nothing new. But that's why I have to switch it. If, if, if it was all hooked up uh, with a, a radio, so equipped with a relay, uh, I would just hit transmit on the computer, and it would uh, automatically go into, into transmit mode and send the message. This is the rig. This is the computer. I'm going to be receiving the messages on. It's also a ThinkPad, a G40, an older one. And this radio also has the uh, interface on it. And they're plugged in to the computer the same way as in the other one. A, li a little bit different. I was experimenting. Uh, and the software I'm running here is FL Digi. FL Digi. And it's uh, uh, free. You can download it and use it. And it's got a lot of nice modes in it. It's pretty complete. Let me show you the setup on this, uh, on this rig a little closer. It's the same interface board 
that I used on the other machine, but it's wired into the uh, radio a little differently. I used my uh, universal interface on this one. Didn't have to solder anything together, just attached them with the uh, screw ones. And of course there's the uh, mic connector in the back feeding uh, into the board which goes via this wire which is a actually cut off an old uh, PC headset into the uh, mic input and the speaker outputs of the uh, computer. Now I had a little problem with this one in that the uh, I believe they put a voltage on the mic uh, output and it was squealing on me for some reason. Uh, by the way, on the other rig, I use the uh, line in, which is what you're supposed to use. But this computer doesn't have a line in. It only has a speaker out and microphone in. So you have to watch that. Uh, the uh, microphone puts a little voltage on the line, uh, which can mess you up. Uh, both rigs are on channel uh, 30. And this is, uh, on this end, I'm using my home-built uh, dummy load here, which is connected by to the radio with uh, some coax and just a bunch of resi uh, resistors in parallel and series to give me 50 ohms. I had another dummy load but I wanted to have a little bit of RF leakage to actually get over there. I found with uh, with the two dummy loads on there the signal was kind of weak. It would, they were so effective so I had to have a little leakage so I just hung that up there to actually be my antenna. Very short uh, 50 ohm antenna. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. I'm not getting receive on this one right now for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't need receive on it. The text written in here that I'm going to send, it's, uh, it's a joke kind of. It's uh, the first thing that they put on the phonograph. Mary had a little lamb. And also, uh, uh, Watson, come here, I need you, which is what Alexander Graham Bell sent. Uh, that was the first thing heard by telephone, so I thought I'd be cute. Okay, let's hit uh, the transmit button here. It puts the radio in transmit mode. And on this machine, you hit pause to toggle it. So there, it's sending it. You can see up here, that shows what you've sent. Now, you can see on this rig, that uh, red line there, that's the signal on the waterfall. And that's the decoded text coming in, if you can see that. So that's coming uh, via the radio. So that, that could work uh, theoretically uh, with these rigs or with some other rigs. Uh, that could be worldwide. Because when this band opens up, 5 watts can get you to Japan. Now that's not a clean signal, it's kind of dirty. It's hard to adjust these CBs. Uh, it's got, it's a little bit wide, a little noisy. wonder if I turn down the volume over here. Yeah, that, that brought it a little narrower, I think, did it? I'd have to play with the adjustments. But it's still decoding it. And you can see I'm... Uh, Still decoding the text. Oh, I didn't mention the mode I'm in. I'm in a mode called uh, PSK31. So it's pretty slow. Okay, I'm looking at the transmitting uh, machine, the com computer I use for transmitting. And this is MixW. And here you have up here, right up here, your mode setting. And I'm using this one, uh, BPSK31. But you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, mode settings, including uh, teletype, slow scan TV, uh, faster modes. Um, I've used Olivia quite a bit, which is a lot of fun. So there's a lot of room for experimentation. These are all written by amateurs to, uh, to play play with uh, these modes on the uh, on the radio and some of them are very complicated uh, they're very uh, very complex uh, to write so it's it's really a, a fun hobby for programmers and for people who just want to be users now that's the uh, mix W settings 
Now we're looking at my receiving machine, which could also transmit if it was set up that way. And this is uh, FL Digi, the uh, free software. And I'll go to op mode. Right here, it's in a similar location to uh, what it is over there on Mix W. They're kind of kind of alike, but they're different programs for sure. And you see all the modes I have uh, here. This one I think has some modes that the other one doesn't have, and vice versa. Um, they usually make it so that you can add modes if you do a little programming. Uh, this one is neat in that you, uh, when you come down to a mode like PSK here, it gives you all the different speeds you can choose. As you pick the faster speeds, what you'll see is the signals get wider. That's called bandwidth. Perhaps you've heard of it. Well, a, a water, waterfall display really displays that graphically really well. Well, I've given you a brief description of what I've been doing with this. I can't wait to get these rigs on 10 meters. Uh, it's not really illegal to send this kind of stuff over uh, uh, the citizen's ban, 11 meter ban. And I know that. That's why I've been using dummy loads. But uh, I wanted to test to see if they actually would work uh, in the 11 meter band before I went to the trouble of switching them over to 10 meters. And they do. So they're going over to 10. Enjoy, guys. This is fun.